Oh, good morning, everybody. It's been a really early wake up for me. I woke up at 5 a.m. I missed my uh, metro and train, <laughs> but I luckily got another train here and got in time. So, Whew. yeah, Marco sent me, one of the organizers sent me a message about one week ago, like, hey, Olli, can you please come do a presentation? <laughs> and I was like, okay. So that's why I'm here. And um, my presentation today, uh, what to take into account when publishing a plugin, uh, it's Kind of the same thing as I presented in a Helsinki meetup. I think it was a few months ago, approximately. But it's be a little bit more with a twist towards actually publishing a plugin since my last talk was about how my work changed when I moved from an agency to a product house. But let's go ahead. Awesome. Yeah, so my name is Oliver Grant, people call me, call me Olli, and I'm at the moment a developer at Linear OY. I actually started there as a WordPress plugin developer, but I just like more the default name of developer since I don't want to be just WordPress. Uh, I also have my own company, I have my own site up, Works, and I have about eight years of experience with WordPress. And as a side note, I do take keyboards kind of seriously. Those who know me know what it's about. Anyways, uh, that's my site, all of that works if anybody wants to check it out. I try to keep up my blog there with various topics. Sometimes it's development, sometimes it's uh, product design. Uh, once I did bypass the Ilta Lehti Plus thing, it doesn't work sadly anymore. But <laughs> Anything weird that comes up in my, in my head, then I just write about it up there. Uh, but yeah, eight years of experience. Uh, I used to work in these companies. It's actually nice to see a lot of colleagues from these companies, at least from, as well from Evermade and from Asta Helsinki, already a few people here. That's nice. But when I worked in these companies, uh, there was one thing in common. These are all uh, more or less agencies, WordPress agencies. Some did also some other things, but mainly the work I did there was like it was a WordPress agency. And how does a WordPress agency work from a developer's, pers developer's perspective? Well, first you get the website design, then question mark, and then you get the profits. And it's every time the same thing. You get the design, then you're supposed to do it as quickly as possible and get it out to the client. Since the faster you do it, the more profit the company makes, and that's important. Yeah, I got a little bit tired of this. Uh, yeah, same thing in, in pretty much every company, and it was one day about one and a half years ago, uh, I saw a job listing for a WordPress plugin developer position here in Helsinki. And that's kind of rare. Who, 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 so how can you get paid by doing a plugin? That's, yeah, that's not normal. <laughs> uh, anyways, the company is Linear. That's where I work uh, even today. And they had a job opening for the WordPress plugin developer to maintain it, uh, update it, and develop it further. And I just thought, like, fuck it. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, Linear in itself, it's a real estate company. It's a business-to-business -business, uh, model. And the main product that we sell is our own system for real estate agents. So probably none of you will ever use our product, sadly. Uh, the real estate dev, uh, salesmen, when they sell, apart, uh, sell apartments or rent apartments, there's a whole lot of documents that you need to get. You need to request documents, you need to do floor plans, you need to order a photographer to photograph the spaces, check all the 
specification of, of the apartment, a lot of work and jurisdiction things going on there. And the whole market has been kind of stone aged for quite a long time. So our system is pretty much just streamlining the whole thing, automating the things that we can automate. So when you're a salesman, you can just focus on the selling. Uh, you can sometimes see our logo, like on OikoTF. That's our old logo up there, but you get the point. You can see it sometime in the product photos. And then we have the plugin. It's actually a real live plugin. Uh, it was some American dude who originally made it. The company had just uh, bought some time from some developer and he made the base plugin and then eventually they needed somebody in-house to develop it further. Since when you have some loose hand, you never know, like, do they have time to develop it further? And then also it's nice to actually do also all other things that can be done with the APIs and whatnot. And it has a five-star review, one review What's by me. <laughs> Best plugin ever. <laughs> but yeah, it looks something like this. So in its simplicity, it's very simple. It's an integration, it fetches the listings from our own API, then it shows it up in a list where you can filter it, and then when you open a single one, it's a dynamic WordPress page, so using the rewrite rules. So quite simple, but then again, there's a whole lot of other things happening in the background and issues that have come up uh, when I'm working with this. And that's what I'm talking about today. Yeah, so moving on from working on project base, so it's a plugin development should be quite simple, right? Um, every time I see a customer's site, to me it looks like this. It's a box. What's in the box? You don't know. The only things you can know is like how it looks like, then you can try to fiddle around, find enumerate the, enumerate the team, plugins, or just use Chrome, Chrome Dev Tools to find out what plugins they use if there's some plugin that loads things in the front end. And also with the IP, you can find out maybe who's the hosting and that way, that way knowing like, oh, is it Sonar, is it Lohi, or is it some shit Indian server? <laughs> but yeah, you never know actually what's going on on the client side. In comparison to agencies, you know exactly who your client is, how they're going to use the site, who's hosting the site, and what's underneath uh, the hood. So pretty much when you try it out, you know it's gonna work. Here it's like crossing fingers, <laughs> please work. So there's a lot of points of failures. I try to uh, segment them out for like hosting, teams, and plugins. I find that teams and plugins are kind of same, same. Ish. And there's also a lot of more other things which I haven't listed up here, but I mean, we only have a limited amount of time. Uh, before you get into any of these issues, if you ever want to deploy a plugin to the WordPress uh, plugin repository, you need to learn a little bit about SVN. Who of you use Git? A lot of people. Who use SVN? A few hands, okay, nice. Yeah, uh, SVN is like Git, but shit. <laughs> or that's my experience. It's not as flexible and, um, well, maybe it's because I didn't know exactly how to use it and that's why I broke the plugin a few times. <laughs> but we got it resolved. But a thing to keep in mind, uh, then the hosting challenges. You don't know where your plugin is going to go. It's the legacy site. Does it use PHP 5.6 or something lower? What WordPress version does it use? You don't know. And also, is there some server-side caching which might affect your plugin? 
you're really out of luck with these things unless you try to circumvent them in some way. Uh, for example, one of our clients used Lohi. I actually took their site to my local development, tested it out, couldn't replicate the issue. Like, there's no one else to blame any more than the hosting server. So that might be an issue sometimes with the issues with the plugins. Uh, however, you can define in plugins nowadays uh, what the WordPress version should be at minimum and also the PHP. And actually, I checked that WordPress now, the latest version at least, requires 8.0, if I remember correctly. We should update our plugin. But I've been changing diapers, so I haven't had really time for that. Uh, let's go to the teams. So in core, I wanted to have them in these four sections. So CSS, content, page templates, and JavaScript. Um, CSS. When you have, I guess some of you have maybe gotten a site that somebody else had developed, and then you put in a form, let's say gravity forms or somebody, something else, and then when it's on the site, you start to notice that the team interferes with the styles of the form. So you get styles from two different places, which look totally different, and it looks shitty. And that's a risk that happens, at least for us. Uh, there's a few ways to go around it. Of course, you can use the importance rule to have more classes in a row. But that's not maybe that good. There's also CSS BEM, so if you want to avoid colliding class names, you can use that. But then again, you don't have the importance when you do that thing, so that's not maybe either a solution. You can use important. That works every time, and your job is secured. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a bit difficult, uh, di difficult uh, to work with this. Shadow DOM is something that we are going to start using. We actually have it in our demo environment currently, and we're going to publish it soon, and it's working really well. So it's pretty much having your plugin as a iframe, on a site, but it's not an iframe. It's actually in line with the site. That's very nice. There's no conflicting CSS classes. But yeah, you need to pick your battles. Uh, here's an example of how our plugin wants data break. It doesn't look that, that nice. No. Oh. And also the React Shadow library. That's a really good one. Okay, then content. Oh, this has been shitty. <laughs> uh, natively in WordPress, you use the the content hook with the uh, content. Uh, the old content was just fetched from the database and inserted in there. Gutenberg blocks they can require one re render in between, but pretty much the same thing. And a lot of uh, these plugins which we have here, what do we have? Elementor, Visual Composer, Bevel Builder, Cadence Blocks, whatnot, also often add their content in their content hook. And that can be problematic sometimes. Uh, so we have actually had to create different options on how you can show our plugin in your site, since every, every site is done differently. Sometimes you don't even have the content to use. We want our plugin to be as plug and play as possible. And so it makes sense to do it as the content and support the native WordPress way of doing things. But sometimes people buy a site from Envato Market and that's life. <laughs> so we need to do different solutions. And so we pretty much have a lot of short codes in our plugin. They're amazing. They work everywhere, and they're not too hard to use. We also have Gutenberg blocks, and we have also made custom hooks. So in worst case scenario, we can still maybe get around the whole thing. Uh, the content, probably 
most of the developers here at least have come across it at some point. So you just add filter the content, get your content and then add it to the content that was already there or overwrite it depending on your use case. But that's, yeah, that's how our plugin actually renders. Uh, this is the React part of our plugin. So it just renders HTML. Then we have a JSS, uh, JS that then builds the React app. Uh, for hooks, this has been amazing. So simple. Just get all the listings from that apply filters and then do whatever you want. Uh, on our client site, it's still the client's data or the listings, despite it's coming from our API. So I feel like we should still let them be able to use the data in some way if they want to do their own integrations or features outside of the plugin. And also if they do that, then they rely on the plugin to work. So it's actually keeping them hooked even harder. Other challenges, we have the page templates. Mm. Remember the time when sites used to have a sidebar? Good old times. Uh, we actually provide a extra page template that's supposed to be as simple as possible. It doesn't have any extra things. And so that in case the client has a site with a sidebar on every page, we can use that template instead. Since the sidebar is, I hate it. <laughs> it takes a lot of space. Oh, yeah. For the JavaScript, uh, JavaScript part again, uh, conflicts. It has happened for us. So um, either the client's JavaScript have broke down, and that also broke our JavaScript, and then the client comes, calls us like, hey, why is this thing not working? Then I look up, and it's like, your site is broken, not our plugin. <laughs> what to do? Oh, well, you need to pick your battles in, in this thing also. Also, when doing JS, uh, encapsulate everything you have, if possible. And when doing globals, always use some kind of namespacing or prefix, just so that you don't get collisions. Plugins, uh, pretty much the same thing as Teams, or I found them like interchangeable, but plugins do have a few interesting things. Yeah, uh, cache is a bitch. <laughs> and there's all the all different sorts of caches and caching plugins, but we have been able to work out a lot of them, and oftentimes it's in the plugin caching, caching plugin settings that we have to do some uh, modification so that it works with our plugin. Uh, in these plugin challenges, the interesting things are probably like language plugins. Um, for basic translations, we just used the local translate plugin to do the from well, generate the pot files, and then from that, the .mo and .bo files. You guys have heard of those? Yeah, noddings, good. Yeah, that's simple, and then that works for every language that we have done. But since our plugin does generate dynamic pages, it does kind of require like, hey, we need to do some logic that is this currently a Finnish site or Swedish site or English? What's the language here? So that has caused some issues. Uh, quick poll, who prefers polylang? Hands up. A lot of hands. Who prefers WPML? A few hands. Oh god. We need to talk after this. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, these two, they were not that bad. Polylang was the easiest to implement. Uh, WPML required a little bit more fiddling, but it was pretty much the same thing since they work almost the same way. They both create a new post and you kind of get in the, uh, the information of what the language is in the same similar way. And in my eight years of working, I had only faced these two plugins and we had only worked with these yeah, uh, in different uh, client projects and I thought like, 
now I've done this, I don't need to touch any more language plugins. And then a client comes with this fucker. <laughs> yeah, uh, it doesn't work the same way. Since we're still a startup, uh, we were in the, well, we're still in the growing phase, but we were even more in the growing phase when I did support for this. It was really important to make the clients happy. So then I actually had to go into the core files of this plugin to see like, hey, how the fuck does this work? <laughs> and I did eventually find a way to make it work in our plugin. But it's not pretty. <laughs> but it works. And it's only for two clients. I think I got a wine bottle when, from the client when I did that. Good client. Totally worth it. Other plugins, CEO plugins. Um, there was a task at one point, like every listing that we do, they're indexable, but then depending on if you use like Yoast or the CEO framework or others on this list, they actually washed out all the information since we have dynamic pages, we don't have a page name, and then all the data comes from an API so there's no automatic link into where which information should go in a meta tags. So every one of these plugins worked differently. And uh, yeah, I just had a day I thought, fuck it, now let's do this. Look up the five biggest ones and then made support for it. Uh, Yoast SEO was the toughest one. Sadly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, your SEO and the SEO framework also required uh, extra sitemap work. And that was not so nice. But hey, you need to support a lot of cases. And your SEO people used. So, what can you do? Then I go about updates. Mm, I mentioned earlier about the SVN that I fucked things up. That wasn't the only time. Um, I also a few times shipped out code that had, that well, it did work on my machine, but not the client's, I don't know, shitty machine or something. <laughs> um, the good thing with plugin development is that even though you ship out something that's broken, no site is going to be broken right away. In agencies, when you update the site, then it's broke down instantly. Well, and that's, then you get the client calling you right away and hey, what's going on? Here again, you have a little time there since not every site will update itself or the plugins right away. They do the cycle maybe twice a day or maybe once a week, depending on the company. And then we have some companies which do not update the plugin or WordPress right away, but wait actually a few months to see when are the common issues from the new update resolved, if there are any. Yeah. So how many solutions should my plugin support? Sadly, it depends. I can't give you an answer. There's a lot of things you can think about when doing or creating your own plugin. When you have uh, your plugin in the plugin rep repository, there is, of course, the forum part where you can do the bug, uh, where you can submit bugs. But in our case, our clients are not tech savvy. They use Elementor sites mostly, and they really like to either call or just send email. So we have made it really simple in the plugin, like, hey, if there's any issue, here's the contact information, send a message, and it has a ready template. Uh, then also, don't overcomplicate your plugin. We have done a lot of things in our plugin, despite it's kind of simple. And in some cases, it's, it has actually made it harder to maintain the plugin itself. One example is the shortcodes. So we have we had first the shortcodes, 
But then I thought like, hey, we should have at least Gutenberg support. So how do we do this? Well, then I made it kind of like a Gutenberg block that creates a short code, even though it looks nice. Uh, so now when you do, do want to update the short code, you also need to update the Gutenberg block. So you have more work to do some change there in your code. Also, since there was somebody else working on the plugin before me, <laughs> it is to blame that guy. <laughs> I think that some things have not been maybe thought out that well. For example, the plugin options. We just saved the options in the uh, WP underscore options table. But if you would want to do something different, then we should also update the format of how these options are saved. But to do that without breaking any client's site, we would either have to do a full replacement to clients and have every client do the settings over again, or make something so that the old settings will be transformed into the new format. And you start to notice there's a lot of work for what no new feature, no new bug fixes. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, documentation. I find it uh, pretty good. Uh, we have in our plugin a own WP admin page. Uh, it's listed full with documentation on what the common issues are, uh, how to use the short codes, and also hooks, uh, REST API, and also clear examples on how to do things. Unfortunately, due to our clients being not so tech savvy and most sites being <laughs> bought by some smaller, smaller companies who use Elementor and just click the sites together, they don't really read that documentation. But I do find it valuable. And it's also easy to reference to that in case you need. We have had many cases like a client would like a different kind of listing or uh, limit it somehow. So you just link them the WP admin page. So, hey, here's this, here's this section. And you can with these options decide on how you want your listing to look like. Well, that's actually at least saving maybe a few emails here and there. Admin notices. We had to do this at one point. Uh, when I started or, or took over this plugin, we used our own API that didn't have any kind of validation. You just made a GET request to it, you got the data. But you required no headers whatsoever, no authentication. Uh, and the API was slow, and there was pagin uh, pagination. So we had a new API. It gave the same data, but it required authentication. It was a different endpoint and no pagination. So it sounded good. But when we wanted to use it, we couldn't just update it over, since if I would just update from one uh, requirement to another, then every client's site would break down within a week's time. And that would not be good. So what we did was actually a support in the background for what the old API and new API. And then we need, did a admin notice, a banner up there like, hey, you should update these credentials. Please contact us so you get them and also a big exclamation mark in the WP admin sidebar. Okay, you should update this. And many did successfully, except for two clients. <laughs> well, we got it quickly resolved, but I think that we still managed to avoid quite a lot of damage by doing this, fiddling around with two different versions. But then again, here again, we had to do kind of two different codes, upkeep them both at the same time. Not so nice, but sometimes you need to go forward. About testing, it's really hard to test a plugin. Uh, I do 
go through different, well, depending on what part of the plugin I develop. Is it the front end? Is it the back end part? Uh, and based on that, I then decide what's important to test. Is it important to test the different PHP versions? Is there something that could go wrong? Is it important to test different browsers for the JavaScript part? So it depends there what is my way to go. But every version, it's always checked like, hey, does this work? And if it works, then okay, then we can push it live. And when it's live, we actually download it once more to see, does it work? And it usually does, which is good. Sometimes clients do have very special sites. I think there's like five clients who have actually asked for a dump of their site since I haven't been able to figure out what's wrong. There might be some uh, conflicting, conflicting thing happening in the team or maybe some weird plugin breaking the thing. <coughs> so sometimes that has been like the last resort, like, hey, can I get a copy of your site or like log in to their WP admin and then just VP all import everything to my local and try it out. And we have actually managed to resolve all the issues, except for the one caching issue on the server side. Yeah, so pretty much too long to read. Pick your battles and know your clients. Know who you're making the plugin for. And also don't overcomplicate your plugin. Keep it simple or as simple as possible. And don't don't support everything since then you can't, then you don't have time to actually develop the plugin further. Uh, then I thought this was a funny comic, so I put it up here. Uh, one thing uh, with the startup, we have had a lot of issues, which many startups do, but I think the mentality is kind of important here. So let's say the plugin breaks. That's not good. The client calls, they're not happy. But we can turn this loss to a win by actually answering the client quickly and updating or fixing the plugin as soon as possible. Let's say within 30 minutes or something. And well, if you're a client, you do a bug report, 30 minutes later, it's fixed. You're happy. <laughs> That's amazing. And that actually gives you more hope of the company or trust in them. So that's something I'm trying to keep in mind. Like, hey, let's try to do a quick, quick resolutions if possible. Outside of WordPress, we have also a solution. I'm a little bit with WordPress. Like, uh, is it the future? I don't know. Maybe. So we are working on a non-WordPress version of our plugin. So it's pretty much just a script which you put on your website and then it builds up. Pretty much the same view, does the same things. Uh, and yeah, it's React best. It's not that, not that complicated, but I think that people who don't use WordPress sites should still be able to use our listing and that's a way to actually make it possible. Uh, yeah, it's quite similar to Juicer. You probably have maybe seen it, the social media feed thing. A few nodding heads, okay. Fair enough. Uh, then about Linear, uh, we are hiring the classic. We, have, we are looking for a full stack developer currently. We also uh, take open applications, even though you're more junior. Uh, sadly, we are not looking at the moment for a WordPress position, but maybe in the future, hopefully, crossing fingers, we do have some plans with WordPress how to how to do more business with it. And I actually have too much work at the moment, so, <laughs> so maybe soon. <clears throat> at this moment, questions? Can we have a round of applause first before we hit on questions? <laughs> 